Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's the last uh, talk of the of this day, so I promise I will be as quick as possible, so we can go all enjoy the celebratory toast uh, and as painless as possible. <laughs> uh, okay, so my name is Adria Gilso Rives, and I'm, I work for FSN for almost a year. I've been working for almost a year at FSN, and I'm going to present. Uh, this is slides about project management with the light zone uh, using a technique called earned value management and also, uh, as, uh, of course, in Odoo. I'm going to do a, a brief pr introduction uh, explaining a little bit what is this technique. For those of you who are not uh, so familiar with it, I'm going to explain also the basic elements of IV EVM. Um, how do you, you do the performance measurement and the forecasting? Uh, some uh, guidances uh, for, use, for using the, this technique. And in the end, we're go I'm going to quickly show you uh, the modules that uh, we have developed in Odoo. And I'll do a quick demo. OK, so I think you will agree with me when I say that uh, feedback is critical for a success of a project. Uh, feedback at the right time and a correct feedback uh, can make a project uh, go from total failure to success. Uh, and in this case, uh, earned value management has, prove, has, been, has proved to be uh, one of the most effective performance measurement and feedback tools <coughs> for, for managing projects. Uh, it enables the project manager to close the plan, do, check, and act management cycle. Um, EVM, uh, basically, what tries to uh, show you is uh, where the project is, where the project is going, compared to where it was supposed to be when you planned it, and where it was supposed to be going. So in this line, EVM tries to answer uh, these questions, like, are we ahead or behind schedule? Uh, are we above or uh, under the budget that we that was uh, planned, or how efficiently are we using our, source, our sources? So some of these questions, FVM tries to answer them uh, with uh, some metrics that I will explain afterwards. Okay, so to give you a little bit of context uh, of how wh or when uh, FVM was um, uh, started to, to be involved in the project management uh, life cycle, uh, from the, in the 1960s, EVM uh, was uh, defined as a financial analysis uh, specialty uh, all in the United States. But during those uh, first uh, 30 years, it was not really used. And sometimes it was actively uh, re reje rejected because it was uh, uh, really a burden to use it. It had many metrics, even uh, at some point more than 35 metrics. And uh, pricing managers, they didn't want to use it. They, they thought uh, it was only for analytic uh, specialists or it was not for pricing management. But then uh, in the, from the decade of the 90s, uh, EBM emerged as a project management methodology. And from this point, it was, it was understood as it has to be used by a manager and executives. Uh, so it uh, from the government of the United States, it started to grow uh, more importance in the life of, the, of, a, of a project. And nowadays, uh, I have to say uh, it is mandatory in the uh, it's a mandatory requirement for the U.S. government, and it's being used in some com like very very well-known companies such as NSA, and NASA, Project Management Institute, among others. Okay. So we have a, a little bit of context. We know that EVM is not new. It, it's a successful technique. But this technique relies on the fact that uh, good uh, <coughs> project management, uh, prin the, 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 the principles of uh, good project management are applied. That means you, are, you follow the, the cycle of planning. First, you, follow, you plan the, the, the project. You do the work breakdown structure. You plan into tasks. Then you, you execute. You check. 
comes into play the, the ABM metrics, and then you act in corresponding if you need to correct something in, in the project, right? One important thing and, and that makes very valuable this technique is that it can be scaled to fit from small projects to large and complex projects. EBM can be scaled to fit in all of them. Okay, so with this uh, introduction in mind, I'm gonna jump into the basic elements of uh, this technique. First, we have uh, the plan value. The plan value is uh, sort of uh, describes how long is the uh, project at a certain uh, moment of time. It's, it constitutes the baseline, and it's represented like you see here, cumulative, uh, when, when a task is finished, is planned to be finished, uh, you, you uh, sum the, the percent budgeted for that task until you reach the budget at completion, which is the budget that was planned for that project. We also have the earned value, uh, which is a, a snapshot of uh, how well, where the project is at a specific moment of time. So it, it reflects the, the amount of work that has actually been uh, accomplished uh, in to a specific date, right? And uh, to measure that, we have different possibilities. Uh, we have different formulas uh, that in order to compute this earned value, and those, those formulas, this all has to be selected at project planning step. At pro when you're planning the project, you, you select which, te which technique are you gonna use in the execution and control uh, steps to measure the earned value. Uh, we have different uh, um, uh, measurements uh, depending on how, um, I mean, you can use all of them whenever you want, but uh, the better approach is to, if the task or activity that you are, you are planning is, uh, is a short activity that uh, in, it's in um, one or two measurement periods, measurement period can be a day, a week, you could use a fixed formula. That means uh, that, uh, for example, you um, said that when you start the task, you credit the, the 20% of the total budget of, for that task. And when you finish, you, you recognize the 80% remaining. You can also use a weighted milestones. If a task is big enough, you can define milestones, uh, uh, milestones in between, like a physical that you can, a physical milestone, uh, and, and then you can uh, set some uh, percentage to be uh, recognized when you reach every milestone. In Odoo, for example, we can do the easiest way is to assign some percentage to the stage. You define a project, you define some stage that the task must go through. Uh, the to-do state, when they are in the backlog, then when you start the, the, the task and go in progress, and then we, when the task is done, right? So in this case, we can do the 0% the at the beginning and the 100% when the task is done. So the, the budgeted um, amount for that task will be uh, recognized when the task is done. And finally, the third element of the of EBM technique is the actual cost, which is uh, an indication of the actual resources that you have, uh, that the, the have been used uh, at a certain moment of, of time. This uh, can be, uh, you know, do for example the time seated hours uh, for a specific task uh, at a certain amount of time, at a certain point of time. Okay, so. Uh, with these basic elements in mind, how do we uh, do the analysis? How do we uh, perform this analysis and, and do some forecasting? Uh, we have some metrics uh, classified in three groups. We have variances. It can be as a scheduled variance, uh, cost variance, variance at completion, or we have indices, uh, such as scheduled performance index, which is how uh, or the cost performance in this, we have many of them. I'm gonna go through uh, some of them, so I don't wanna, uh, I cannot make this talk uh, that extends. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through some of them. For example, the scheduled variance. So indicates that how ahead or behind are uh, regarding a schedule. Right? The, the formula is really easy. You 
to, to, to compute the schedule variance, you need to subtract the plan value of the earned value. So in here we can see that at some point of time, some task maybe uh, it, it extended more time than we had planned. So we have a lot of variance. Uh, this is a percentage, so we see 50% of variance, and then we some sort of corrected the variance and we uh, did the following tests. Uh, we uh, the team did the following test uh, like uh, in less time than was uh, planned at the beginning. We also have scheduled performance index. Um, so how well the team is using the time or the time estimated completion, which is a forecast <laughs> that it, uh, it tries to, cal to compute it, um, how are we one, not how, sorry, when are we going to finish the project if the trends, the current trends continue as they are. If, if we continue working the, w the way we're working, the, the project is going to finish at some point in a more, like later than we expected. So we then we can correct it. Uh, from in the cost section, we have uh, this cost variance, which is same in the schedule, indicates whether we are above or under the budget that we planned. And here we can see that for this example, we are always are uh, above budget, so we are using more than we are planned. And it's computed as the earned value minus subtracting the actual cost of the project. We have other costs, such as the cost performance index, which um, tries to it gives a metric uh, to how well are we using our resources. The estimate at completion, which is um, what's the final um, the cost of the project once it's finished, it, it is finished if the current trends continue as they are. And also the estimate to complete, which is quite useful, uh, that it tries to, to show you uh, the value of the, the cost. Uh, of the remaining work of the project. Uh, okay, so some uh, guidances now that uh, in order to to do uh, to apply the principles of uh, project management and and then apply this uh, this technique. At first, we have to uh, establish a baseline. So we have a project. We have to uh, decompose the work in uh, in a smaller task uh, that can be manageable and, and, and are for a specific activity and assigned to a specific employee or a specific uh, team. Uh, you have to uh, set, as I, I told you in the planning stage, you have to set the appropriate measurement technique for the earned value. And uh, something that I missed to mention is that when the planned value is established at the planning stage. So that baseline should not be changed uh, unless there is um, a change on the scope of the project. Maybe uh, the, the board or the, the leaders, they, they reunite and they say, OK, we have to change the scope of the project. Then, okay, of course, if the, the task change, the plan value can change. But the plan value is, meaning, is meant to be a baseline. So have to keep uh, an integrity. And then uh, during the execution, <coughs> we have to, uh, in order for the technique to be uh, useful, you have to, for example, in, in this case, in Odoo, you have to uh, mark when a task is finished, assign the, the hours, set the hours that you have spent uh, in that task, a specific task. And uh, so th then you can apply this, the metrics that I told you about. Uh, and the data is as correct as it, as, it, as, as it can be. And then you can ma make decisions based on, on, that, on those metrics. Uh, OK, I'm, I'm going to do, I think I have time. Yeah. I'm going to do a, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, do how, how this is done. So here we have a do. Um, we have the minimum. Uh, modules installed that we need. So we have this project. I have two of this ACME project that is completed. And I will show you afterwards. You have all the, um, the metrics and the graphs. But for example, if we are in the planning stage, we, we can plan through the basic uh, Kanban view in Odoo. 
we define the, the hours, uh, we define the task, we plan the starting date, the deadline. Also, we can assign the pl planned hours that will be used to compute the planned value. We can also do this in a, in a more visual way, which is the, the GAN view. It's a customization of the, be the basic uh, GAN uh, view of Odoo. And in here, it's like really quick. You can define dependencies, for example, this task is meant to be finished before the other one can start. Then it will apply the corrections because this, ta this task cannot start before the other ends. This is the weekend. So uh, you can here set really fast and move some tasks here. For example, I want this I go there, for example. It's quite forward to, <coughs> to manage this from this view. You can also. Uh, assign resources to this to this task. For example, this is gonna be done by Mitchell Admin, of course, our guy here. And then you can see on here below that for those days we have assigned eight hours because it's the working time for Mitchell Admin. This is at the planning stage. It's a tool that is uh, quite easy and, and graphic to to use. And then we define the stage. We define the the um, how which technique we are going to use. In this case, we are going to use what I told you that we're going to credit zero percent at the starting of the task and hundred percent at the ending of the task to co to compute the earned value. So when the um, we have here in reporting, we have a report which is quite nice. In this case for the Acme project, which shows a lot of, of values during time. I'm going to filter those. I have predefined, for example, uh, this filter, which shows the earned value and the planned value. You can see that at some point, uh, we planned to finish a task here, but it was delayed. And it, it delayed, and then some task it was finished. We, uh, For example, this one was supposed to spend two days, and it was one. So. Uh, you can see here uh, at a certain point, for example, if, if the project has not been, is not finished and we are 22nd of <coughs> August, the plan value will arrive until here and then you can, you can see, okay, uh, we, are, uh, we compute the, the variance. Uh, we see that there's a problem here. And then you can act on, on top of the problem and see what you can do to correct it, to to try to adjust the, the project to and bring it back to the to the good path, right? Uh, so yeah, basically this is uh, this is it. You can see also here if you go to projects, you have a, a, a tab in which you can see the metrics uh, in here um, and also the project stage, uh, of course. And yeah, sorry. You see it here, and uh, we have like for schedule, for cost analysis, and also the 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 forecasted uh, values. Um, of course, there is still wait. Well, first of all, uh, this project, this module is, is called Project Earn Value Task, and you can find it out in our repo at fsn slash Project Earn Value. Uh, feel free to, to try it and give us feedback. Uh, there is some work to do uh, still. For example, there is a, a nice uh, technique that is explained in the AVM documentation, which is management by exception. Uh, it would be nice to, to set um, some thresholds. For example, you can, you, you can accept a variance, a scheduled variance of 10% above and, and, and well, 10%. Then uh, you can set. You it would be nice to see, to set that in the project, and then if the variance at some point it goes out of the stress call, to receive a notification or maybe to to light a red line or a red uh, led or something in the in the Kanban view of the project. Uh, there are some aspects in which EVM is still it has some limitations, and it would be nice to explore those limitations and and see what can be done. For example, if you plan by critical path and there is a, 
uh, task that is not in the critical path, but it's really big, uh, really huge task. It may uh, create some sense of false uh, error, or you can see that the earn value is not as it's supposed to be, but it's okay because in the end it's not in the critical path, so you can take more time in the schedule to complete that task. So there are some improvements to be done. And also for the data visualization, I was thinking maybe so to add um, a new view with uh, some KPIs that you can see really quick for this project, this, this value for, for schedule part. So you can, even the user can um, define which values he, he or she wants to see. So. This is uh, still some future work that, that can be done, but still the, the, the uh, model that is working now is quite nice. You have all the, the graphics there. You can see all the data. Uh, so yeah, you can try it and give us feedback and we will be uh, glad to, to work together in for the improvement. Uh, okay, so that's it, thank you. Uh, If you have any question, uh, so have you had plans to put, you know, like to put some traffic lights on the project cards as to when you exceed certain, you know, KPIs that would highlight, you know, projects that are in trouble very quickly? Hmm. So yeah, yeah, you, uh, yeah. This like the from the. Management of by exception, you, yeah, you got to define a threshold or uh, accepted values, and then, so in some way, quickly see from the project um, camp and view, for example, where do you have to quickly put your attention on and see what's happening there. Yeah, that, that could be an awesome improvement. Could you put the slide back up where you had your um, you know, the repo on? The? The slide back, yeah, thanks. Okay. The next thing about it's the uh, like uh, cost performance indicator is that if you have measurements that are uh, comparable across projects. So you a cost performance index of zero nine is something that you can value across twenty projects. Yeah. So it uh, gives you a good indication that you can have really alerts that if your cost performance index is below a certain threshold, mm. then it triggers a button right in the yeah. in camera so you can quickly, yeah. so you know 0 0.9 is bad, yeah. irrespective of what project that so you want. So I just imagine, you know, the guys fly up and they order that, that's the only thing they'll look at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. This, this, this way is, like, it's easy to, to implement this technique. Sometimes in the past it was not implemented because it was hard. In the planning stage you had to define a lot of things, but now it's just you select it in the planning stage, you put the hours there and it will be automatically computed. And Is that Gantt chart something you developed with the... Yeah, it's a, s it's a customization from the Odoo's basic Gantt view. Oh, nice. On top of that, it's still alpha. <laughs> it's not released because it has to. I have to work a little bit more on that, but I think it it was nice to show you, like because it, it gives you a, a lot of freedom for designing the planning the the project. I think one of the most painful <coughs> things to create the when you start the project is to, to that you work on the Gantt chart directly. So it's it's painful to start a task in the yeah. for loops because people is probably imagine that you should go to the chart, 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 yeah, chart. Uh, can chart and then start to create tasks and link them together, yeah. and and this is something that you can do now in all do it directly. Yeah. Uh, just work with the done view most of the time, and then when you're 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 good with the project, like sliding and moving, yeah. and then then you go to yeah. yeah. Whereas now it's impossible to do in all yeah. uh, because it's you have no capability to link the task and then. So it's, a, it's something that I think we were missing totally, uh, even in Odoo 30. Yeah. 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 They got the yeah. They got all those dependencies and the resource and then see quickly the resource location. Am I putting that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Too many 